Gentleman from Alexandria, Mr. Kapika. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for the point of personal privilege. Gentleman may proceed. Thank you. We've come a long way in the last year as it relates to education in Virginia. Whereas last year we were fighting over A to F, there wasn't broad consensus about uh, a testing or accreditation policies in the state. When you look at the bills moving through the chamber today here and going through the process and committee, you see a real different landscape where both parties are working collectively and collaboratively to advance smart, thoughtful education policies supported by broad cross-sections of the school community in Virginia. And I think that's really exciting progress. It is amazing what you can get done when you're not fighting over credit uh, for who does it and instead work in a collaborative way to create uh, positive change. All of this work we're doing is the low-hanging fruit of education policy. Testing reform, accreditation reform, uh, being smart about how we label and, and measure the progress of our schools is the kind of work we should be doing every year. It's the kind of work we should be constantly striving to perfect in a collaborative way that, quite frankly, shouldn't be partisan. But testing and accreditation reform are not the end point of our work. In fact, uh, they really should just be the starting point. I was pleased to hear just mentioned the effort to hold the line on cuts to education in Virginia, but we need to go further than that. We need to address the continued multi-year constraint we have put on our schools. In per-pupil elementary and secondary school revenues, Virginia is 38th in the country. Due to declining take-home pay, that even a 1% raise wouldn't fully fill the hole of, more and more teachers are working two or three jobs to do their job. We don't ask doctors to work two or three jobs to be doctors. We don't ask lawyers to work two or three jobs to be lawyers. Okay. But for teachers, it's become unfortunately too common that you have to have a second job to work in your school system. In average teacher salary as a percentage average pay in Virginia, we rank 49th in the country. The last state funded raise for teachers prior to last year was in 2008. And when you account for rising health care costs, inflation, last year's raise still has teachers underwater from a few years ago in terms of take-home pay. We sometimes talk, as we just have today, about not cutting education spending. But when you have rising per-pupil numbers, not cutting rising student populations, not cutting spending is still a cut in per-pupil pay. And the assumption underlying that is that somehow you don't need more teachers when you have more students, or you don't need more resources and capacity, whereas we all know that's not true. Uh, the reality is we've actually lost teachers in Virginia over the last few years as constraint in our schools have forced class sizes to get bigger, have forced popular school programs like arts and humanities and extracurriculars to be scaled back as schools deal with the continued constraint of resources. Accounting for inflation since 2008, we've seen a 12.2% decrease in per-pupil funding. As a continuation of our bipartisan work on education reform, we're asking everyone in this chamber to come together and join us to not only prevent no cuts to education this year, but to actually meaningfully and significantly increase per-pupil funding. We are concerned when we see bills advancing that would take a very constrained education funding budget and perhaps siphon off some of those monies into private education or other services. In a world where we have unlimited resources and we are dramatically growing our education budget, perhaps there's room for an intelligent policy debate about that. In a world where our schools continue to be constrained, every dollar we take from them is a classroom that's not fulfilling its promise. We get a great bang for buck with education spending in Virginia. We spend less than most states and actually have much higher results, uh, and we should be proud of that. Uh, in fourth grade math scores, we rank 14th in the country. Room for improvement that additional funding for teachers and math specialists could help. In fourth grade reading, we rank fourth in the country, something that we should all be proud of. Meanwhile, in state and local tax revenues as a percentage of personal income, we rank 44th. We're getting a great bang for the buck, but that only goes so far. As the president of our Board of Education and members of the Board of Education said in their annual letter to us as a chamber that they send every fall, uh, a Board of Education, I would mention, that is controlled by the majority party in this chamber, 
They said that years of constrained resources are starting to have an impact on our school's ability to fulfill their mission, to live up to the promise we ask of them, the high standards we give them, and the increasing expectations every year. It is our hope that this year we can come together as a chamber and add new funding that is meaningful and for the first time give our schools the relief they demand. Last year, we passed meaningful and thoughtful uh, legislation to ensure teachers in Virginia had CPR training. Unfortunately, because of constraint in cash-strapped school districts around Virginia, teachers actually had to pay for their own training. There are bills going through the process this year that have meaningful and thoughtful expectations for new training requirements for teachers or boards of education or principals and others. But if we don't significantly increase per pupil spending, all those become as unfunded mandates and in some cases become new expenses that teachers are going to have to pay for out of pocket. Thank you for all the bipartisan work that's happening this year. It is a pleasure to be in a chamber that is looking at education in a collaborative way. Let's find a Virginia way to increase per pupil spending in Virginia this year and have a real impact on our classrooms. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Are there further motions or resolutions under Rule 39?